So am I working my way through the fort today? I'm trying to get this thing figured out. And uh, I was going over in my mind the things that are not ideal about this. Let's say it one more time, similar to the 510 Whisper cartridge, all right? Because some of you are going to pick up on that and you're going to be like, why are you calling it your own thing? I just want to be really clear. I'm calling it my own thing so that there's no conflict with the prior stuff. Because there are two people in the world that have made noises about proprietary and about uh, trying to sue for using... Anyway, I ran into a little bit of resistance. So, I'm calling mine the 50 fart. I'm not going through the paces with it today, and I'm going over the things that are not ideal about it. And I came up with another idea that I'm going to try. Ah, uh, I try stuff. I mean, I got... I'm tempted to call this... I mean, it's close enough. It's called Opinions by Al. But, I was reminded today, I'm boogie and bang and forth. I've got a sign out in the main shop here. Shit white people do. It's a meme. I print memes off the internet. And uh, this is one that's funny. It's your white people do. Uh, veganism. Wine tours. I mean, who else does that? Drive around and get drunk. Segways. Redo a high five because it ain't good enough. And every, every group photo, every fam family photo, every, every time there's more than five people getting a picture, let's do a silly one. Okay, so I have nothing against that because I'm white people and I do all that stuff. But it's funny because um, what came to mind, the reason I brought that up is because another name for this thing could be Shit, Al does. Al does stuff in a search for the best way. Um, and today I made a lot of head. I went this way, I went that way. Um, a couple of the things I did print out. Not that you can read it, but it's nice to refresh. The reasons why I'm doing this, um, the reasons I think this 50 project is cool. I'm going to show you some stuff here. You won't be able to read any of this, but I'm just going to free bang along a little bit here. If you're not ever interested in doing a subsonic 50 caliber project, then by all means, uh, go check something else out. But, but I'm going to... Uh, reiterate again. I had to go up at lunch today and I was uh, printed off a thing here. First of all, I'm shooting away, bashing these cases. Um, make sure that I have it correct amundo here. I think that's close enough for the purposes of what I'm doing. Um, The biggest thing is, there. Th this is not the ideal cartridge, but it's the best. Here, here are my choices. I, to make a 50 caliber cartridge, I've got a few different things I can do. I can go with a rimmed case. This is not a rimmed case, but you know, all know it's like a 30-30 or a 45. Some of the big old uh, 45-90s and 50-90s, and there's a whole bunch of rim sharpsy type stuff. The problem there is that the head spacing is done on the rim, so rims have to be turned. They have everything. All of the vibration control comes from the rim. I like to use a shoulder because obviously another way to do this is to use uh, Weatherby cases. Big old fatty Weatherby cases and headspace off the belt. Same problems. Belts vary, and I don't want to take every case, every piece of brass, and put it in a lathe and try to get a hand glove fit between the face of the belt and the face of the bolt. So those are out. 
Head spacing off the case mouth is done in semi-automatic pistols, it's done in all kinds of stuff, it's done in a 45 ACP, uh, 9mm, all kinds of guns, and it's acceptable, but not perfect. So I'm revisiting the pros and the cons of this cartridge. Um, and the various different ways to do it. There's many different ways to do it. And I'm still excited about this uh, thousand grain bullet that Cutting Edge came out with. I ordered some. I don't know how long it's going to take them to tool up and make them, but I've got some of those coming. And I had never, because my program wouldn't accept the numbers, my RCBS program wouldn't accept a thousand and two grain bullet. It just blanked out and looked at me dumbly like I stepped on its head or something. So I made up today, anybody who's familiar with uh, the RCBS system knows what this is. 600 yard target, 10 mile an hour crosswind, and I made up a 999 grain fictional bullet with a BC of just over one. And I ramped that bad boy up to 1,050 feet per second and the first thing that bounced off the page, the first thing that struck me in the eye, the first thing that just about gave me a black eye was the wind drift. 600 yards. This picture is for 600 yards. And it's you're not going to be able to read it, but you can see a little bit of what's on here, I guess. 600 yard trajectory, very loopy, we know that, no big deal. That focus is so bad I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to go somewhere down here on the table and call it good. But the wind drift, first of all, remember, I'm designing a system for hunting elk at 600 yards, hopefully someday to be suppressed or silenced because guns are noisy and they wreck our ears. I'm old. And I still hear like a banshee. I still got, I can hear the highs and the lows. I can hang, I can hear as well as, I won't dare say I can hear as well as my wife or see the colors my wife sees her. No, I, I, but I heard pretty freaking good and I can see some colors. Um, so let's not go there. This was never, uh, anyway, um, I had a specific goal in mind, and just because it's kind of ubiquitous, a lot of people in this world think the 300 Win Mag is an adequate elk cartridge. Good elk cartridge. Been around since the whatever, 50s, 40s. I don't know when the Win Mag came out. But a lot of people think that properly applied, the 300 Winchester Magnum is adequate. Now, I personally don't think it's adequate for elk, or if it's adequate, it requires good shot placement. Um... If you take the raw energy that it carries to 600 yards and the weight of the bullet, you find that it brings to the target with a 180 grain bullet and a hot load and the blah blah blah. You can run the numbers with a TTSX or whatever. It brings to the target at 600 yards, even though it's fast, it's got four tons of energy at the muzzle, but it only lays a portion of that on the target. It's down to only 1780, 1850, somewhere around 1800 pounds by the time it gets to the elk. And the bullet is slowed down to where it doesn't open really, really big. And that little bullet is still traveling fast enough to make 1800 foot pounds. But that little 180 grain bullet stops. That It's getting down near the base of its working area. Um, basically, it's not even a 30-30 at this point, so it's okay. But my uh, <coughs> my goal here has been, well, let's take something that brings the same energy to the target, but it does it with a big bullet. Let's do something that has a... Oh, man. Okay, I've been shooting this thing, and it's size nice. Same amount of energy. Now, where it really steps up is with that cutting edge, 1,002 grain. This one right here only brings about 1,500 foot-pounds to it. It's, it's 300 foot-pounds 
lighter than the 300 Win Mag at 600 yards. But it is a 750 grain slug carrying that energy, and I have proven. I'll give you an example of that. When I was first building this thing, I did all the work on the sled. And out here in my yard, I set the sled down, and I shoot out across the swamp into a, a berm. And I do it in the dark most of the time. And I'm testing recoil. I go out there with a whole bunch of guns, and I throw them on the sled, and uh, boom, 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 down the range. Well, I went to test this little guy. I got one loaded up here. Um, put it on the sled. It sat really low. And about 34, 30 feet out in front of my uh, area with the sled, the ground rolls off down into a volleyball court. Very gentle. I mean, babies toddle down it. It's just that we set the... To, my slopes, my yard's got a little slope for drainage and we carved in a volleyball court and so the high, around the high side there's a, it's not even hardly steep enough to sit on and tear up. But anyway, when I say tear up, I mean T-I-E-R in case that was not clear. To watch the volleyball. Um, anyway, I shot, boom, it's pitch dark, 10 o'clock at night. Send this 750 grain slug down it, and I'm working up loads. I started at 700, 800, 900. There's a long learning curve in working up these velocities, different powders. I'm sending these bullets down range. And uh, they're sounding funny there. But I can hear them rattling through the trees down there, so they're getting into down by the swamp. Down when I say swamp, they're not glancing off the water, and there's a whole mountain behind it, so don't get crazy on me. They're fine. Uh, but I can hear them going through the trees. Well, the next morning I was going to work. I've told this story before, but I'm telling it again because I'm opening this back up. I swung the headlights across, and my whole yard was chewed up like Caddyshack. And I was, oh, man, I ran out there, and I was going to start stomping walls. Well, there was these 12-foot long grooves in the grass. Grass was peeled out and just chowed for about 10 to 12 feet. The bullets had been hitting the ground this side of that where the ground rolls off. They had been hitting and then peeling along under the sod, to get tunneling, popping out 10 or 12 feet away and continuing down. I could hear them rattle them off the trees, peeling the sod open. Now, you take that 300 wind mag, set it up in the same position and shoot it at the sod and it goes, pa-ching, wink, off into the distance. And it might knock out a chunk of sod the size of your two fists. We call it a softball. We shoot at the yard a lot around here. And a softball ch sized chunk of sod means your, you know, baseball size is more common. You can stand up with a 338 Lapua mag and get the angle right and hit, and you might knock out a divot this big. But these bad boys, these big bullets, were hitting the ground and just tunneling. And then continuing on down the range. So that's where I really came to, I'm like, okay, so let's start with the 300 Win mag. And what are the various ways to get at least that much power? I like a 338. That's why I build so many of these big Lapuas. I like to drop well over 2,000 pounds onto an animal at whatever yardage. Well, under an elk. I've never shot an elk with a rifle, so I don't know anything about it. But numbers say, you know, 1,000 pounds for deer, 1,500 pounds for big deer, 1,000 pounds for a antelope, a couple thousand for elk. So I'm going through my various options, and as I'm out there shooting today, this isn't the ideal cartridge. It's not perfect. And the biggest thing that scares me, I'm shooting it in a Savage, and it's got this great big 338 Lapua bolt head. Somebody who buys this Savage down the road could turn around and think it's a 330, put a 338 Lapua barrel on it if they're just bright enough to realize that this is built on a 338 Lapua. I have to think about that because I'm a dealer. I send stuff out down the road and I have to think about what's going to happen to it. But anyway, during the design phases, I knew what I wanted to get at least 300 wind mag down on the target. So somewhere around a ton. And come to find out, not only does this thousand grain dude Equal the basically this equals the wind mag in effectiveness, even though it's got 150 less foot pounds. That big bullet does a lot more damage. That's what I was trying to tell you with that going through the grass. But the thousand grainer blows the wind mag by another 150 feet per second or 150 
foot-pounds the other side. It's pushing 2,000. But to get back to leaping off the page, Windrift at 600 yards with this loop, 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 loop through the air thing. 17 inches. That's ridiculous. Understand, I've gone through this before, wind drift is 100% dependent on how much velocity the bullet loses. It's a drag function. The drag is measured by how much velocity is lost by the bullet. If the bullet starts out at 2,000 and it hits the target at 1,000 feet per second, it's lost 1,000 feet per second, and that translates to an enormous drag over has nothing to do with the wind blowing on the bullet. But anyway, this thing only loses 100 feet per second. It goes from 1,050 down to 943. That's ridiculous with, when it loses only 100 feet per second in its travel to 600 yards. It only blows over 15 inches. Okay, so if I had a choice between this and a 300 wind mag, with a 168 or a 180 hopped up and I had a 600 yard shot. This beats it. This is better. That's pretty cool. So I wanted to share that and also as I'm shooting it's getting expensive. You know these bullets are four bucks a piece. The other bullets I'm buying are three to four or five bucks a piece. So I decided to follow up on something Two things I followed up on today is, number one, I'm trying to come up with another case, and I've got a fighting chance. I've been using these, uh, these are actually cut down W or RUM cases. I've been campaigning this Hellbringer project, and that brings all this stuff around full circle. Basically, that's blowing these out to 10 TPI. So in a case like this, in that section right there, there's about 12 or 13 thousands of taper and the when I fat butt these I'm gonna roll this down so you can actually just flat out see it this all comes together because when I fat butt these you can see the big swelling here. And then I blow the taper out to parallel like one of these. I end up with something. This one I have already necked down to where I can't get a bullet in it. But as you can see, there's a pretty good neck there. I'm going to look at making an absolutely minimalist, no neck turn, throw it in, form the case in the die, get it to jam. There's enough room here. I think I can get a 12 or a 14 thousandths shoulder. I can get a shoulder on the external, on the outside of the case that is bigger than the typical case mouth that's used on a 45 ACP. Should hold. I might be able to come up with a minimalist design. I'll call it the Fart Blossom. This is the 50s Fart. If I can make this little svelte, the Fart Blossom. So as I'm saying though, this is getting a little bit expensive. And I'm always a tight wad. So I'm going to show you something here that I did, just to wrap this up and see what you think. Those boxes of belt ammo are so dirt cheap. Well, they were just... I might have bought that one early in COVID before the prices went stupid. I ain't sure about that. But, they're a whole lot cheaper than buying. Now the one thing you got to worry about is there's tracers in here. And I don't want to blow tracers. Uh, tracers are harmless. They're not like exploders or something, but just in the interest of safety, um, I'm not going to knock any tracers out. But I built this to pull bullets. I decided that I'm going to take, I tried to pull some of these bullets with a standard call, call, call it style puller and it just ain't happening. And the pulling assembly for these bullets is a couple hundred bucks. And it's not worth it to me. These bullets are worth nothing. But what they will be kind of fun for is, especially working with a second case and having to go through all the histrionics, it takes a hundred rounds, well, more than that, just to go through the velocity parameters and find the powders and find a powder. Today I got a powder that got low ES. Yoo-hoo! So, 
That's cool. But I'm going to slap on this thing a little bit. It's a... It's a thing, guys. Now, I didn't build up what I should. I'm supposed to kind of hold this. I thought I could get it in just a couple of whacks. I probably won't. If I hit my hand, it's going to be something. Okay, that's how hard it was. It ain't easy, alright? But, once I get... It works better when I'm down here. I pulled a dozen earlier. It takes almost longer to uh, get them out of the rack than it does to get them pulled. And then I catch everything in this bucket, bullets and powder and everything. I don't really have any use for this, what commonly gets called pull-down powder. All I know is that I got this absolute crap ammo, Lake City ammo, for cheap. Cheaper than I can, I mean like three bucks a round, cheap. So, at three bucks a round, and then if I can figure out, I've been fussing about figuring out a way to use these bullets. And I think I just did, now obviously, I'm going to make it better, all I did was take my, this is actually the plate that I use for pulling bullets conventionally. It's just a piece of junk plate, and it sits over here on the back, and this is what I hammer on with my little kinetic pullers. I just stood it up on end because with a board under it, I was able to get it up high enough so I could smash on the edge of that bucket. Now, I am going to take this tool and uh, do some modifications on it. But for right now, I'm throwing this out in case anybody needs to pull. This is one of my uh, shell holders from my reloading setup. So it's kind of a pain. I got to screw it out of my press, screw it into here. Stick this into it, and then tape it into place. Takes a few seconds. Once I'm rolling, I can pull these things every, I don't know, pull a bullet every 10 seconds or something. I haven't bothered. This is, this is a fun project. This isn't about work and getting paid. And I'm going to take this thing and cut it down some, lose some inertia, lose some weight so I don't have to bash so hard before I, but I have to leave it pretty thick in here. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, show you what I'm doing this day. Mentioned the fart blossom, which is about a 20% chance of it happening. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. I'm thinking about doing one on case lube coming up here.